Hi, I'm Tom Dick. I'm a math advisor for Texas Instruments, and this video is part of the TI and Focus AP Calculus series. We're going to take a look at how you can use the TI Inspire to visualize solids of revolution. I'm going to start out here on a notes page where I've defined a couple of functions. g of x equal to x over 2, and I've also defined h of x equal to the square root of x. Now I've also defined a couple of bounds uh, these will serve as values for uh, x equal a constant, a equal 1 and b equal 4. And these will serve to bound a region that we'll look at in the plane. Let's take a look at the graph here. And you can see that I've plotted g of x and h of x, but limited to that interval from a to b, which was 1 to 4. I've also denoted these two vertical lines, x equal 1 and x equal 4. Now this uh, is dynamic and so if I go back to the notes page I could change any of these values including these limits so for example if I um, change the value of a to 0 instead enter that and then go back to the graph screen I should see an updated picture of the situation and there we go uh, x equals 0, that vertical line is actually the same as the y-axis. It's very common to have a free response question on the uh, AP exam that deals with finding areas or volumes related to regions defined like this. For example, you might be asked to find the area of the region bounded by some of these curves. Uh, for example, the area of the region bounded between these two curves. Uh, there's also questions about taking some kind of region like this and rotating it around an axis like the x-axis and then finding the volume of the resulting solid of revolution. What we're going to do here is show how you can at least visualize these solids by actually taking advantage of the 3D graphing capability in Spire. So I've gone to the view menu and I'm actually going to change now to 3D graphing. And you see this three-dimensional box here. Now you can see I could plot a function of x and y, but I'm actually going to change my 3D graph entry from a function of two variables to a parametric surface. All right. Now I want to remind you what we're doing here is uh, this is not this kind of 3D graphing is not a topic that's on the AP exam. We're making use of this capability just to have a chance to look at these surfaces or solids that are generated uh, by the rotating some region around uh, an axis. Okay, now, so for example, if I wanted to rotate the graph of G about the x-axis, a way I could accomplish that is define x as being t, and then I'm going to plot y and z as g of t times cosine u and g of t times sine u, respectively. Now for each value of t, if I let u run through the values from 0 to 2 pi, this will take the g of t value and rotate it around the x-axis. Okay, so just that's just to understand how this is working. Now I'm going to edit the parameters here, and what I want to do is I want my t values to match up with the interval that I'm interested in. In this case, this is going to be from 0 to 4 and I need to change the u values to run for the full circle 0 to 2 pi. And you can see this has generated a cone shape. Now I'm using the directional arrows on the keyboard to rotate. I can use the left and right arrows to rotate in one direction and I can use the up and down arrows to rotate in another direction. So I can get lots of different views and it also kind of accentuates the fact we're looking at a 3D figure. Okay, now I'm kind of rotating around so you can get uh, a good side view of it. And we can get all kinds of different angles of views of this surface or solid if you think of it as being filled in. Okay, um, one of the options we have here is, uh, you'll notice this is in a kind of a cubicle box. It, that helps to see it as 3D, but if we uh, want, we can get rid of that box and hide it. Here we have a little bit cleaner picture where it just shows the axes and our solid. Uh, I've actually selected the solid. You can see in gray its formula. And we can uh, pull up the attributes of that. 
and I could it's in kind of a wireframe model we can have it just look at like a surface and so after having selected that it uses this kind of shading uh, and so there's a nice visual picture of the solid revolution we generated there now I'm going to go back and generate another one of these by using the function H so we're going to rotate the graph of H around the x-axis also so it's a similar thing I've gone to a second parametric surface set of definitions leading XBT and HFT cosine U HFT sine U are going to be my Y and Z functions. I'll change my T min to T max 0 to 4 and also have my U values run from 0 to 2 pi. And we've graphed that and now you can see this kind of paraboloid. Uh, literally, it's a, we've taken a part of a parabola, rotated it around the axis. And I'm going to select that and actually also make it just a surface only under its attributes. So let's do that. And I'm also going, you see the, these numbers here, uh, this bottom number here is a, kind of a transparency figure. Uh, it's how, and so I'm going to, the higher that number, the more transparent the surface is. So I'm going to raise that from 30 to 50. And notice what that's done is it lets me kind of see through the paraboloid and I can see the cone shape inside of it. So rotating that region between the two curves around the x-axis would result in this kind of solid paraboloid with a conical hole bored out, which we can actually see very nicely here. Let's look at an example from the 2019 AB exam, number 5. We were presented with a couple of functions, g of x equal negative 2 plus 3 times the cosine of the quantity pi over 2 times x, and h of x equals 6 minus 2 times the quantity x minus 1 squared. A couple of vertical lines at x equals 0, x equals 2, and there was also a horizontal line at y equals 6. Uh, here I'm showing graphically the two curves between x equals 0 and x equals 2. Uh, I haven't shown that horizontal line yet, so let's go ahead and graph that. So I'll just go ahead and remember c is equal to 6. And one of the questions involved rotating this region between the two curves around that line y equals 6. So can we visualize that? Well, here's how you can adjust for that kind of situation in your 3D plotter. Notice that I'm taking my functions g and h, and what I'm doing is shifting by the value c, doing the rotation and shifting back again. We can do that for both g and h, and the result will be what you see here. So these rotations of those curves have now been done around the line y equals 6. Keep in mind that the solid that we're interested in is actually taking up the space in between the blue surface and the red surface. And we can rotate around for a side view that shows us our original two curves. And you can see that the axis of rotation center is at y equals 6 instead of the x-axis. Well, that winds up this short video. For more resources like these, see education.ti.com.